Welcome back to the Bees Knees Pottery. Today we're working on the stamped pumpkin lantern. They are open so that you can stick a little light inside of them. They look beautiful on your table. Join us. Now we're ready. We have a slab of clay and I have the pink plastic over it because the clay is pretty wet today. We're rolling it out. We want it to be as big as our pattern. We have a pattern here that has four, basically four petals and a circle. Um, you can make this as large as you want and make your pumpkin as big as you want. Just to give you an idea, this pattern makes these pumpkins here. You can see one's taller, one's shorter. It just is a matter of how you position it as we go along. And you'll find that out soon. So we're rolling the clay out. It fits the pattern. Let's just make sure it's the right thickness. I'm using my ever trusty two tongue depressors and I'm seeing that it is the right thickness right now. So we're ready to go. Today I'm going to make sure it's nice and compacted um, the clay because it is a little wet as we discussed and I'm going to compress it to make my piece a little sturdier. It's kind of going in all different directions. I'm pressing down as I'm going along. It does take a little bit of clay off as you do that. If you see an air bubble, we have a couple air bubbles here. I'm just going to poke them and then roll it, roll or compress again. I don't need any more rolling because I already have the right thickness. So I'm just going to compress it. There we go. Uh, we would like a pattern. So I have these rollers that we're trying out today. Um, they make impressions in your clay. Again, my clay is a little wet. So I'm actually going to put the plastic over the top and roll right over it. So I'm going to take my roller and press pretty hard. You can see pressure I'm putting on. And then I'll pull this off and I have an impression in my clay. This one has um, just different shapes. It has a four leaf flower and some triangular petals. Some of the other ones you know, this one might be a little more masculine pattern, repetitive pattern. Uh, we have one with flowers that would be beautiful too. So there are many different patterns on the rollers in the set. I will leave an affiliate link below for you if you want to check those out. Okay, so once we have the, our pattern in our clay, we put our paper pattern over and just kind of arrange it how you want to catch most of the impression in the clay. That on there, take your needle tool and just go right around the outside. I'm making this one a little bit larger as I cut it out. Just because I want a little larger pumpkin. And see, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just using it as a guide. I'll take that paper off. The paper will be in your kit. If you order a kit from us, it will be in there ready for you. Let's take this excess clay off. Okay, now that I have the pattern on it, the clay cut out, I'm going to take a sponge and some water. I'm just going to smooth out the edges. Just real gently. I don't need a lot of water because remember how wet the clay is already. Now I'm going to pick the clay up 
and flip it over because we want the pattern on the outside, obviously. Okay. Now you're going to want your clay to dry just a little bit. So we're going to take a couple minutes and I'll let the clay dry so that we can manipulate it a little bit better. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, we got a little bit of the water out of our clay, so it's a little bit easier to handle and it's not sticking to our mat. The next thing I'm going to do is a little trick with the straw. Uh, we get a lot of straws with our to-go meals and um, I never use them, so good reuse for a straw. I'm going to put it with the paper still on it and bring each of these layers up to the straw and stick it right to the straw. Just pull them up, stick them together. See how it's staying there? Bring each one of these up. Our clay again is so wet that we can just put it right on there and we're going to do a little blending seam. Then we're going to manipulate each of them out till we like the way they look. Just like that. And we have a little pumpkin. Now if you put it up higher, it'll be a taller pumpkin. If you put it down lower like we have, it'll be a lower pumpkin. This one looks like maybe in the middle of both of them. So we have a cute little patch starting up here. Uh, if you want to lift it up, you can just bring the petals up a little bit higher. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take some of our extra clay, just rip a piece off. I'm going to roll it, making a little bit of a coil, and I'm going to wrap it right around the outside of the pumpkin here. It's going to hold all those petals together. Now, if your clay is a little bit drier than mine, I suggest that you take your needle tool, make some scratches, which is your scoring, and add a little bit of water and put that on. But for me, it was pretty wet, so just putting it on there and blending it all together. My straw is still in the middle. It's supporting it. Just make sure it's holding on to it, supporting it. And I'm going to turn it every once in a while just to make sure that it's not sticking. See how my straw turns around there? It's not sticking. Okay, so our pumpkin is done. The next thing that we do is the leaves and the leaves and the little vines that are growing on it. So for the leaves, we need a flat piece. Now I did put that pattern on one side, remember, so I'm flipping my clay over, compressing it again. I'm going to just take my needle tool and cut out a leaf. I am going to make sure there's a stem on it so I can attach it. Pumpkin leaf is pretty, pretty straightforward. It's almost like a maple leaf. If you have leaf forms that you use for some of your work, go ahead and use those, obviously. I am just going to wing it and Put some lines in here. And then I'm going to take my finger and press the edge. That's just going to make it so it's a little easier to work with. Looks a little more realistic. And then when I put it on the pumpkin, I'm going to manipulate the shape so that it looks like it's just laying on the pumpkin naturally. You can put as many leaves as you want, of course. And you can do your leaf in whatever shape you want. Pressing the edges again. Well, 
by the time I put my paint in here, these are going to look a little more realistic. I'm going to put a little curl in the leaf. And then for my vines, that's another coil. And I want them to be pretty small, pretty thin. See how if I use my whole hand, it makes it a little rounder instead of square. Now what I'm going to do is take my needle tool and I'm going to wrap it around my needle tool gently, hopefully. It's a little dry so you can see what happened. It did split a little bit, so my clay is actually finally getting dry. We're going to add some water, just a little bit of water, and take it and wrap it around there. And then pull it off. And because my clay is getting drier, I'm going to I'm going to score. So I'm scoring, adding a little water, and then putting my vine on. And I just lay it on there. Now you can see that my vine is cracking a little bit. It's okay. I'm going to take some water and just smooth it out. I'm using a brush and some water. Now, if your clay is too dry and you just can't make it work, go ahead and add water and just work the water through your clay a little bit. go. Now you can put as many vines on it as you want, of course. Okay, so there we have it. We have a couple leaves and a vine. You can see this one has a couple vines, two leaves. For the stem, what we're going to do is just take your needle tool and scratch up on it. It makes it look a little more realistic. On my stem, I'm actually going to do some scratching too. Puts a little texture through it. I'm gonna look at my leaves, adjust them if I want to. You can see on this one, the leaves are all curled up. And then you let it dry for maybe a half an hour and when you're done you're going to come in and take out the straw. So I'm going to let mine dry and then I'll be back to show you how to take the straw out of the middle. Okay next we're going to paint this. We have waited for it to dry a little bit. It's been about a half hour and now you can see my clay is drier. So I am going to take some paints from Mako's line. I'm using a foundation and this one is Harvest Orange. And I'm using this nice olive color and a little bit of cinnamon. I like foundations because um, they, they go on so beautifully. They dry nicely on clay. I can do it on my, my dry leather hard clay and it looks beautifully. Now when I do this, I do have to leave the bottom open, the bottom unpainted, or the inside. Like you can see on these, the inside bottom, and then the inside is white. It's not painted in there. So this one, I cut a hole in the bottom. Uh, I can put a little luminary candle in there. Um, this one, I was just gonna put a little um, push light in there. We have small little punch lights that we put inside of things that can go in there. Let us know if you want one of those. We can um, put that in your kit for you. 
Okay, so I'm going to start with the orange. That's my lightest color, and I'm just going to start painting. I'm dabbing the paint on because, again, I have leather hard clay, and the first coat I'm going to dab it on. Now, if I get it into some of the other areas um, where I want a different color, like the vine or the leaves, I'm not going to worry because this is a lighter color, and it the other darker colors can go right over it and there's no problem. So paint kind of backwards for me but so you can see and um, I'm just dabbing that paint on there being quite liberal. And see I got a little on the leaf but I'm not worrying you know leaves have orange in them in the fall orange and green and it'll be just beautiful. So dab that all over now my second coat when I go in I'm going to just put it on regular I don't have to pat it on but I do need to wait for the paint to be dry in between my layers I'm going to clean off my brush and go into the other colors now I'm going to start with the green to do my leaves I'm just tapping color here and there all over the vine and now I'm going to use the same brush not even cleaning it off and grabbing some of the brown cinnamon color and doing the same with that just until that whole vine is covered with paint just dabbing it on double color I'm going to add a little bit of brown onto my stem area. And that's it. We're all done with paint. Now, you noticed how I left my straw in during the painting phase. I'm going to leave it in a little bit longer until the paint dries. That's what I would recommend for you doing. Um, that way you're not messing around with the paint. All you're going to do is come in, take that straw, and see how I twisted it? Just twisting it slowly as I'm pulling it up. Now your pumpkin has to be relatively dry, but not too dry, because if it's too dry, you're not going to be able to pull that out. So as I'm working with my pumpkin and painting, I'm twisting the straw to make sure it's not stuck. Now, I know it's not, and I'm just going to pull it out, and there's my pumpkin. It's still standing up. It's supported. If you want, you can close in that top part. You can see on this pumpkin, it's closed in, and on this pumpkin, we left it open. Again, it's, do you want the light to shine up through that or not? Um, I'm going to leave this one open a little bit, and it's ready to go back to the studio if you do not have a kiln. Um, again, many times we've told you, let it dry, pull up the corners, place it back in your bag, and bring it in, and we'll fire it for you. Uh, it will take a couple weeks, one week for drying, because the pumpkin has to be completely dry, and then another week to get it through our firing process. I hope that you followed along and you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow along with us. See you next time.